Hey YouTube, it's Tim Witt again, back with another modification for the Behringer FCB 1010 pedal board. In my previous video on the FCB, I replaced little micro switches inside the pedals for reliable pedal switching. This time it's going to be something a little bit more ambitious. I'm going to actually try and cut down the FCB 1010 in the mini mod as it's been dubbed online. So basically, you got the pedals and then you got the two expression pedals on the FCB and it's a very kind of large clunky board. So what it actually does is it takes off the expression takes off the expression pedals, cuts it, and actually cuts through the pedal to shorten it down into these little just pedals. And then you actually install some uh, TRS connectors so that you can actually in use other external expression pedals in there. Uh, in place of the built-in pedals, which by accounts are kind of a bit wishy-washy uh, for those nerds out there. They actually use uh, light resistant, uh, light de dependent resistors. So if you actually open it up and have a look, there's a little strip in there that runs from clear to dark, and then it shines a light through it, and there's a little sensor on the other side, uh, which shows how far the pedal is actually pressed down, whereas Pretty much everything else in the world works on a little like rotary knob that offers a resistance. So it takes out those pedals, replaces it. You can use any pedal that you like in this instance. So if you have a favorite volume pedal or expression pedal that you like, you can chuck that on instead. Or even if you don't want them, you just don't happen to have them. And so it's just a really like sort of slimming down of the pedal. Um, <laughs> it's gonna call it the Jared Foggle mod, but I am not going to call it that ever again in my life. So let me run you through it. So here we have the internals. If you flip it over, you can see there that I've taken off the expression pedals. They're gone. And I've actually measured out a line where I want to cut the board. Flip it over, taken out the internals and I've unscrewed everything here. So if you'll notice that this line here separates where the pedals are versus where all of the electronics were. So now we're going to have to rehouse these electronics back over this side of the board because this is all going to be gone. So I've taken them out. I'm going to uh, desolder all of these these plugs here. Um, make a make note of what plugs actually into what so you don't. I don't know, blow it up when you plug it in backwards or something. Uh, take note of the the um, the holes on the back here. Make take measurements because we're going to need to drill them in over here. Uh, a lot of people have been doing an external power mod, so taking all of the power and actually mounting it in an external box. I'm trying to avoid doing that just because it's uh, just trying to minimize the amount of uh, fuss that this thing has. Keep it really clean and sleek. So. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to start with that. Move these over here. Shave it down. You take this end piece here, and then you can glue it onto here. And then off you go. Let's see how it turns out. I have taken the power unit. I've desoldered it from the power plug itself, and which is now here. So what I'm hoping to do is mount the power plug here. And then mount the power like supply to, down in there. But to make room for it, I've had to take the control, uh, the control switch plugs, and I've uh, taken them out of out of here. And I'm now going to mount them over here, just above the PCB, which will then leave room for everything over there. So the only modification I've had to make so far is there's a little wire that runs from these control switch plugs over here to the um, to the PCB or where the MIDI is. So now I've just put on a longer cable because it's this real short guy here which is not going to reach. So I've just put on a long cable so I can put it over there. Now I'm going to drill some new holes for the switches to chuck them in their new home. And if you're interested, the, um, the new pilot holes I'm going to drill here for the switches uh, just in line with this screw here. The holes themselves are one centimeter in uh, diameter. Uh, so I've just measured the old holes 
from there, located them over here, which is about maybe seven millimeters up from that switch there, just so they can, whoop, on the other side, it can fit, yeah, you're not gonna be able to see that, just so they can fit in and won't interfere with this screw. And we have finally dremeled a hole <laughs> in the board. Here's my little power plug. Uh, checking it up in there. Yeah, I like that. I have decided not to drill the power plug. I'm just going to bypass it because doing this sucked bad. I had a little dremel here and now my floor is littered with broken dremel pieces. Oh man, that was tough. <laughs> Using the right tools is probably a good idea. Here it is. I have put the power supply back in place. If you flip it over, you'll see there that by moving those two switch jacks from there over to here, that has freed up this space where I've mounted the supply. I've drilled two little holes in there to put screws in. I just had these screws lying around, so I've got some screws with uh, washers and nuts there just to make sure this thing is not going to move. I've resoldered it back onto the power plug. And fortunately, the power plug has got a lip around it, which means that when you put it into your hole, there it covers up that real bunk-ass hatchet job I've done of dremeling out that hole. So that all looks neat. All there is to do now is kind of just clean clean up that a bit. Yeah, so take off the um, all the texture, screw that in. Then it's on to making that big cut there, and we're almost diggity done. Whew. All right, so I managed to hacksaw this chunk off. Oh, look at this. I've just barely shaved my PCB, but it's all still intact without the pins are still there. Oh, yeah, using a hacksaw to cut that is exactly as hard as you would think it is. Just letting you know about a little snag that I've run into. So here is where I'm going to be attaching the new side. Here is the new side itself. And so I'm trying to sort of slot it in under here. I'm noticing that this part, here's a little screw here, which I've un unattached, it's still got a metal mount which is soldered onto the PCB, which interferes with this little part here. There's normally a little metal, uh, one of these little like metal reinforcements that's sticking in there. I've taken that out, but because I'm not actually going to be using that screw, and that's what's getting hitting that, getting in the way. So I'm just going to shave this down to fit around here. So I've got in there with my Stanley knife, I've cut down the sides there and so now I can just get in with my screwdriver and I can just easily pry them up like so and then they should just snap out like thusly. And now the end cap fits like a dream. Try and angle that in there so you can see. Oh, baby. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, you get the idea. Shave those little bits off, end cap pops on. All G. Alright, so while drilling this final hole to screw the end cap on, I have the drill piece when it went through, has gone down and punched this tiny little crater here into the PCB, which is actually severed what looks to be a single line of connection. I've plugged it back in. It Things still work. Some stuff doesn't. I don't know if that's what is that is caused by this or whether that was something else of best stuff but that is just something to be super careful of because this thing is super thick so when you're drilling through it you'll be drilling 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 and then just suddenly it'll punch all the way through and then wreck up the joint. All right, and here we got the finished product, the shortened down FCB 1010. Couple of problems, uh, that top line doesn't work anymore. I think that's because I damaged the PCB in there. Uh, all the switches seem to work, but the lighting on four and 
six no longer works. So you can see here that six is still doing something, but there's no light on there. Other than that, five, nothing. Four, three, two, one. Down. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> um, overall, I'd rate this difficulty as like a, a eight out of ten, like seven or eight out of ten, because drilling and like get cutting through the uh, through the metal of this board is really tough, and that sucked a lot. Um, yeah, successfulness, pretty successful. I guess it was an 8 or 9 out of 10 if I haven't botched some of it. Yeah, overall, it's pretty good. I haven't installed the, the uh, little um, the expression pedal jacks yet because I just wanted to be done with it. I managed to snap off one of these control pedal things along the way. But, yeah, oh, that's, that's that. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. Catch you next time. Maybe subscribe, maybe I'll upload another video in the future. Who knows? Tim Witt.